Hi guys, I'm so excited for today's video. We are going to be having a conversation of owning a business as a Black woman, and I invited my friend Tina to help me have this conversation with you guys. Welcome, Tina. Hello, I'm so excited to be here. I think this topic is so needed to touch on, and I'm excited. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So let's go there. How is it owning a business, especially for us being first generation in both of our families? I tell people what you do, and let's start there, and then we'll just start unpacking some tips. Yes. Well, my name is Tina. I am a photographer and boutique owner. Um, I also help coach people in sales skills, which is super exciting. Um, I am, yes, I am the first person in my family to start a business, which is crazy. Um, my father, he had like a painting business, but it didn't really take off at all. And I think coming from a family that was always struggling financially and just didn't have any of the tools to, you know, help the next generation build wealth. Uh, this has definitely been an interesting journey on my end, just trying to figure out what that looks like. And thank God for the times we live in, right? You have Google, you have YouTube. Um, I think the biggest thing for me has been sifting through what information is for me and what is not for me, because I think there's a lot of information out there from a lot of different gurus, but as a black woman, like I can't take all of those, I can't take all of those tips. And I also can't take everything at face value because you never know what someone has going on behind the scenes, even though they may present it as one thing the story is very different. So I think it's important for us to highlight people's different journeys and where they come from. Girl, I completely agree. Well, I can relate to a lot of what you said because I am the first one in my family. And honestly, I never saw myself owning a business. I was working in corporate. I was happy until I wasn't. My spiritual journey led to me finding myself and realizing that I was looking for more. I needed to reach more people. I needed to help spread the message of love and like it is possible for women to want more, to like build a business, to build a career, to build a name and to, to want more than like what their families had, right? Like my dad did own businesses when we lived in the Dominican Republic, but in the States, no, they just worked. So I didn't have a blueprint. And just like you, I was going through social media and YouTube and TikTok. And I'm like, no one that looks like me is doing this, number one. And two, the messages are kind of convoluted. I feel like there was a lot of like really heavy work hard, run, live your twenty, no, live your nine to five to work at twenty four seven. Like that's not it. I'm not doing that. So it's funny because we kind of met on the path of both of us having our businesses and coaching. But I guess what kind of tips would you give to someone that's looking to start a business? Mm, that's a good question. <laughs> so many, right? Where to begin? <laughs> Um, I think the biggest thing, the first step I would say is to do it scared. And I know that sounds very, you know, just duh, but it's true because you're never going to feel confident. You're never going to feel like I'm ready. It's, it's going to require you to be so uncomfortable. And I think sometimes we are trained to like protect ourselves or, you know, um, wait until you feel peace and all these things. And yes, there is a place for that with business. It is not <laughs> going to feel peaceful for a while, especially not starting out. And I think about, um, I've never given birth, but I have sisters who have, and I have friends that are doulas. And I know that there's like this, you know, nervousness that mothers feel, but once the baby's pushed past a certain point, then it's just like the body takes over and the yeah. baby knows what to do, how to release itself. But that first stage of like working with the body is intense. And I think that's how birthing a business is it's not going to feel like, oh, this is smooth sailing. The first half of it, um, depending on, you know, what stage you're in and how much information you've been given, it is going to require a lot of push. It's going to require um, a level of consistency, a level of care that maybe you didn't take before. And honestly, it will feel a little isolating because a lot of people are not on this path. So get ready for major life changes and <laughs> take place. Well, yes. I, and I can agree to a lot of what you said. The birthing a baby analogy is great because you think you have the baby and you're done. Uh -uh. You have to raise that baby. You have to nurture. You have to evolve with it. There's like different stages to having a business that at every single point you have to evolve. You have to change. So my number one tip would be make sure that you want this. <laughs> make yeah. sure that your calling, your purpose, whatever is calling you to have a business is not money. 
Because if that's what you're chasing, yeah, money is great. Money will come. But this demands a whole new version of you. I feel like owning a business has asked me to expand in ways that I, I didn't think were possible in the past. And there are people like, I'm like, oh, you could have a business and you could have a business kind of like Oprah and they just don't have it. Like you said, it demands consistency. It demands continued growth and evolving and learning new things. And honestly, you have to become a new person because the person that I was before owning a business, I just clocked in and out, right? There was a schedule. There was someone checking up on me. There were metrics. There were like goals. And then you throw away corporate and you realize that they were doing something right. You know, we do need structure. We do need a schedule. We do need a plan. We need to track finances. So number one, make sure you want it. Number two, if you do understand that you have to change, you have to grow, you have to invest in yourself and investing in your business is great, but this is where me and Tina align around feminine owned business. It's what you do for you. Is how you evolve, is how you represent your business because you could hire people for all the things, but when you're starting off, you're what's called a solopreneur. Solo means alone and it is isolating and it is lonely. And a lot of times, especially for people like us, like our families, we don't have someone we can go to and be like, what did you do at this point in your journey, right? So we have to hire mentors and coaches and meet other people. And it is pretty isolating when you realize that the people around you don't have the same mindset until you start making the big bucks. Because I've even had family, you may not mock it, but make comments of like, why don't you just get a real job? Or like, is this really going to pay the bills? And now it is. But when I started, there were more sad days and hard days than there were good ones. Wouldn't you agree? Mm-hmm. 100%. And I I wanted to touch back on the whole identity thing. I mean, back to the whole motherhood analogy, like when woman becomes a mom, like she's not (laughs) going to the club. She's not, you know, hanging out with the girlies all the time, like everything changes. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't think about when it's going to affect every aspect. It's going to affect friendships, the way family interacts with you, the way you look at responsibilities. It's, It's big. And so it is important to think, is this something that I really want? And if it is like, let's turn that anxiety or stress into excitement, because that's really what it is. Right. Um, But yeah, I think being confident in knowing that like, this is your decision and for better or for worse, you have chosen this. It does fuel it for me, at least. Yes. But it's deeper than that, because that loneliness tends to kind of come into like, I should give up. It's not good enough. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, why would people pay this? Two things come up there. Number one, you are needed. There is a reason you have this calling in your heart to start a business, whether it's a product or a service or whatever you do. And number two, you don't have to do it alone. And this one took me a while to figure it out because I didn't have the support system. So I had to build it. I had to go out there and network and connect people. And eventually some of my clients became friends. Some people along the journey, whether it was through an event or networking, started expanding my horizon to where I had more opportunities. And honestly, when you meet other women, especially women who look like us, who are doing it and making it look easy, it's like you can learn from anyone. You Mm -hmm. never want to be the smartest person in the room, but you also have to like walk into a room. The opportunities, the success, the friendships, they don't just come to you. You have to kind of expand your comfort zone, like your container, and go meet these people and make an effort to put yourself in a situation to grow. That's what I'm saying. It demands a whole new version of you because in like high school, our friends were there because we were just forced to spend time together. At work, same thing, right? You had a coworker or people that you kicked with. When you have a business, you don't have that. You're just you alone with a computer, sometimes in person, and it's really isolating. So community for me changed the game. When it came to my business, like your tribe, that's your power. Mm, so true. So, so true. And I think another thing that when you said invest in yourself, you said that earlier, that's huge because I think before you have a business, investing in yourself, like what does that even mean? You know, you may think that means going out to eat or buying new clothes for work or whatever. But when you have your own business and you're building, investing in yourself is not only investing in the business, but investing in your mind investing in your mental state like I think a lot of people don't touch on that like oh it's fine like you'll be good just focus on like the hustle or the grind but that hustle and grind can can bring forth a lot of problems like can can spring forth a lot of untouched or unhandled like trauma 
-hmm. from early childhood, whatever that looks like. And so knowing that you are going to have to invest in your mind, (laughs) in your skills to transform once again into a different person. And it's not transforming into a different person. It's transforming into the best version of you. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times we're scared of what that could look like because it's change. But I know for me that that's one of the biggest things that I have seen a difference in my business is the investment into new skills or the investment into making sure that my mind is okay and like taking care of that aspect. Girl, I love that you touched on that. Number one, as a coach, number two, as a business mentor, 99.9% of business problems are personal problems. We get triggered with something around our childhood or abandonment or rejection, or we don't feel good enough. And all of these things are what blocks you from success. And I'll speak from experience here with YouTube. There have been moments when I'm like, oh, when I have to edit a video, this is such hard work. Let's cut it, right? Let's not edit. Let's go live. Let's just talk about it because we're limiting ourselves from our potential. And investing in your mindset will change everything. You need to have emotional intelligence. You need to have a backbone because everybody's not going to like what you're doing. Everybody's not going to agree. And even deeper than that is knowing that the investment, although you can get the pretty website and you can get the free feed, which is important, right? You do need it eventually. What you really need for a business is mindset because you're going to have to evolve. Algorithms are going to change. The market is going to change. Your client is going to change and you just have to evolve with your business and evolving involves changing. You can't do things the way that you've been doing it your whole life. Like COVID was a perfect example of this, right? A lot of businesses had to go from like brick and mortar places and like having their employees come in every day to everybody working from home and the interaction being via social media or Zoom or whatever. So businesses had to grow and expand and evolve. So life is gonna challenge you and owning a business, we're not trying to deter you from it. I'm just trying to make sure that you put the thought behind the fact that you are going to change. You are going to be different. It's going to bring out a version of you that the goal for me as a feminine business owner is not to work harder. I want to work smarter. I want to attract my clients. I want to enjoy my life. I want to embody the woman that I wanted to be. Because when I tapped into this dream of owning a business, the goal was freedom and joy and ease and to have a life that I could take vacations or spend time with my puppy or the things that I love. And a lot of women out here look burned out and yeah, you have the money, but working 16 hour days, is it worth it? Not having weekends for yourself, is it worth it? So you almost have to get your priorities straight and then become the person who can have that life. So it does demand a lot of growth, but that's the exciting part because you learn to love it. I'm a student of life and I think everybody should be. Yes. For you, what do you think, what would you say to someone who's like on the path, like they're about to start their new thing, they're so excited and they have all these ideas and let's say there's people in their life, like friends or family that is like, this is dumb or just makes fun of them or, you know, they're, no one's even saying anything, but in their mind, they're like very nervous about the feedback that's going to come. What advice mm-hmm. would you have for those people? So much. Don't give up. Find your people. Find people who are on the same path. Like watching this video, you found it for a reason. You're connecting with us for a reason. We have communities. We have support. We have resources. And what that means is you don't have to go at it alone. A lot of times, like I said, family and friends are not going to get it. Or your mind is going to tell you that they're not going to get them. And you have to push through that block because your business needs you to. There's no way you can attract your tribe or make the money or pay the bills if you're not showing up. If you're hiding, if you're not allowing yourself to be your fullest potential of you. So I think that's what I would say is one, don't give up. And two, find people who inspire you, who motivate you and who push you forward. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I had to ask because I know you're a coach and I know that a lot of people struggle with that. I definitely struggled with that getting started. Yeah. Do you want everyone to be on your same page? You want everyone to like you know, bring out the streamers and parade you in the streets. Super exciting, but that's not how it goes. You know, a lot of people and even that when they do. change. It, it's just, yes. it's, it's what it is. Oh, so much right there. Friendships do oh, change. Oh, on it. No, no. <laughs> I love it. It's friendships do change. You find yourself connecting more on business and mindset than you do on like partying and drinking. And you grow apart from some people and with other people, you start to align more with who you want to be. And that's a beautiful thing. Like you're not meant to stay the same. I'm not saying there isn't value in like long-term friendships or whatever, that there is love and connection, but 
You're supposed to expand. Your tribe is supposed to grow. You're meant to meet people who call you higher. And there's nothing better than having a friend. And I point to you in here, Tina, of like, Jordy, where's your video? What are you doing? Why are you not showing up? Because that's what we need. And a lot of times, because people, whether they were our friends from before or our family, right? They don't know that we need that accountability. They don't know that we need that support. They don't know how hard it is to push through a bad day, to like have something scheduled and you have to show up, you know? And this is where I'm saying, like, I think Tina and I were talking about this earlier. If you are happy with corporate and nine to five in your job, please stay there. <laughs> like, this is for someone who's like, your mission matters more than the work you have to do because getting a business off the ground can be intense emotionally. It genuinely will expand you in ways that you might think your whole life is falling apart, but it's falling into place. You're becoming the woman who can hold it down, who can have a business and it doesn't have to be hard, but I don't mean like working hard. Internally, that's where the work happens. I feel like as women, it's not the grinding or the DMs or the show up. It's more like slowing it down, sitting with yourself, sitting with your emotions as they come up. When you have a defeat, allowing those feelings to be there, but also when you have a win, celebrating yourself. I learned this one from one of my coaches. She was like, blow a birthday candle every morning and celebrate the fact that you're alive, that you're showing up, that you're choosing to show up because ladies, it takes a lot. It takes a very special kind of woman to show up and do the work. So true. Oh, I love that. I'm like, where's this video when I got started? <laughs> well, but that's that's the thing about finding community. I personally have my community, my 2.0 life, which I'll drop below um, on the, I don't even know what it's called, in the little comment section below. Um, but the reason why I say that is find your tribe. It doesn't have to be paid. It could be local. It could be the Chamber of Commerce. It could be on social media. It could be on Facebook. Find your people. Find someone who speaks your language, who resonates with you. We don't have to do this path on our own ladies. Yeah. And I'll take the step even further. Like if you can't find anything, start something yourself. Like I know when I started my boutique, um, I wanted it to be so different, right? Cause I do brand photography and I'm a brand strategist. So I was like, I know all that goes into it. And I was like, this has to be more than just like clothes. Right. And I started, I decided to host my own pop-up and that brought forth so many women that I was like oh my god where were you my whole life like friends you know yes. that I didn't even know lived in my area <laughs> you know but they all came together because I had other vendors come through so they brought people and everyone was on the same page and then that led me to other pop-ups being invited and so it's like if you if you don't have it if you can't find it start something reach out you have to put yourself out there and I know a lot of times if you're a shy person or if you're someone that just was like, I don't like talking to new people, we have the internet, you know, you can, you can put yourself out on the internet and retreat again, you know, it doesn't Literally. always have to be your front facing all the time, but making that effort to be like, Hey, I'm intentional. I want to create a community of people because I'm lacking. Most times other people are lacking too. If you feel that it means that there's a need. So if you can't find something definitely start something for sure and to add to that this is that showing up on youtube that's creating community posting on social media that's creating community because once you have the comments and the conversation is going you relate on something this weekend i just got certified on reiki and i met a whole new spectrum of people that i had never been exposed to and it was really refreshing in a way because just when you think you've hit a ceiling and it's like this is it this is my life now you grow again new people come into your life, a client pushes you to go deeper, or you add a new product, or you launch a new brand like Tina. Tina went from photography to her boutique, but that transition and that continuous growth, that is what's allowing community to be built. And again, we go back to that tribe feeling, having people makes the journey so much easier. So just like Tina said, even if it scares you, do it anyways. Find your people, build a community. Sometimes that's all you have. And there are people who get it. There are people who understand you. And I feel like that's why we landed on this video today. Yes, I love that. Okay, so I wanted us to touch on, you know, once you are in the state of running everything, how easy it can be to fall into that hustle, crazy, like trap where you do start to let yourself go, even if your intention was to have balance, whatever that means. Well, and <laughs> and that's to touch on that. Yeah, and that's the part of getting a mentor that resonates with you and understanding what you want. 
because there are people who are, you know, 10 years, 15 years in, and they're still hustling. That was not the life that I signed up for. That was not the life you signed up for. So what that means is in order to do that, you have to grow. Automation is huge. Having support on your side or learning new skills where like you can kind of cut the time creating courses, showing up in different ways. You almost have to like break the cycle of do, do, do and find the things you do really well that you enjoy, like your zone of genius or so to say, and do more of that. Because what lights you up attracts your people. So you don't have to show up everywhere or do all the things. You get to pick where and how you show up and that will bring the right people to you. Yeah, so true. Oh, so good. <laughs> I love it. I'm loving this conversation. So Tina, honestly, thank you for taking the time even to, to have this conversation. I think they should happen more often. And I know whoever's watching, ladies, drop your questions or comments below so that we can go deeper. Because I know that, again, the journey is isolating. Sometimes we're alone and we're here to give advice and mentor and help you out. Because if you can even get one step in the right direction, then you're still moving forward. And that's what we're here to do. 100%. I love it. Thank you so much for having me. All right. So that would be all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching.